Merry Christmas and welcome to Keys Church Online. We're so honored that you're joining us on this Christmas day or maybe you're watching later. Either way, we're just glad that you're with us. I hope that if you are watching on Christmas that maybe you've already enjoyed opening up some presents with family. Maybe you've gotten to eat some good food already. Maybe you're just drinking a nice hot cup of coffee or hot cocoa. All those things that make Christmas so cozy. Now, I'm not sure what your Christmas morning has looked like this year, but I know that I have extremely vivid memories of what Christmas morning has looked like all throughout my life, but especially when I was a little kid. Now, I'm extremely blessed to have fond memories of Christmas mornings growing up, as I'm sure many of you have some fond memories as well. And I don't know if you had this problem as a kid, but I did. I could not sleep on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Twas the night before Christmas and all through the house, everyone was sleeping except for Scott. <laughs> and maybe some of you can relate to that. I mean, all I could think about as a kid was getting to wake up on Christmas morning and open presents. I would be surprised to know that I, I even would have got two to three hours of sleep before I would inevitably wake up, stare at the clock, waiting for just an acceptable time to go and wake up my parents so the fun could begin. I remember being elementary age and I would get so little sleep that I would always go back to sleep on Christmas morning after we opened presents and before we did Christmas with our extended family because, well, I was just so exhausted from the sleepless night that was Christmas Eve. Maybe you have similar memories. And I believe that the reason that so many of us have memories like these is because there's anticipation surrounding Christmas. The Christmas countdown begins as soon as Christmas ends, right? I mean, tomorrow will be 364 days away from Christmas. And isn't it true that Christmas goes from being months away to a month away to passing us by seemingly in the blink of an eye, especially as you get older? And the anticipation of Christmas seemingly makes it go by just that much faster. I mean, we anticipate the lights and the decorations and the get-togethers and the presents and the good food. But if we're not careful, we'll anticipate everything about Christmas and the Christmas season with the exception of the one thing that we should be anticipating the most. And that's celebrating Jesus and reflecting on what Christmas is truly all about. And I think the truth is that we're all guilty of this. I mean, whether you're new to following Jesus or you've been following Jesus your entire life, we can all struggle with keeping Jesus at the center of Christmas. We know that Jesus is the reason for the season, but we can let the season pass us by without actually giving Jesus much of a second thought. This is why years ago, when my oldest daughter was born, Kirsten and I decided that we wanted to start a family tradition on Christmas morning that would help us make sure that we didn't miss what was most important. That we didn't let Christmas come and go and let Jesus just pass us right on by. We wanted to make sure that Jesus was at the center and that we weren't simply anticipating gifts or tradition or nostalgia, but that we were anticipating the celebration of God's great gift. So we started a tradition of reading the Christmas story together every year on Christmas morning before we ever opened any presents. And while I'm sure that you've probably already opened some presents and begun your Christmas celebration, I wanted to invite you into our tradition as a family and for us as a church family to simply take a moment and to read the Christmas story together here on Christmas morning. For us to have just an opportunity to make sure that in the busyness of Christmas, that we make sure that we make time for celebrating what's most important, and that's Jesus. So I want to read to us part of the Christmas story this morning, but, but I want to read it out of the Jesus Storybook Bible. And this is a Bible that we give families here at Keys Church when they dedicate their kids to the Lord, but we also have it available on Sundays for any family and really anyone who would like one. And to me, there's just something about the way that the Christmas story is told in this children's Bible that really makes the Christmas story come alive. 
This is why every year on Christmas, our family reads this story out loud out of this Bible. And on this Christmas morning, the first Christmas for us as a church family here at Keys, I want to invite you to join us as we read through the nativity portion of the Christmas story from the Jesus Storybook Bible together as a church family. He's here. The nativity from Luke 1 and 2. Everything was ready. The moment God had been waiting for was here at last. God was coming to help his people just as he promised in the beginning. But how would he come? What would he be like? What would he do? Mountains would have bowed down, seas would have roared, trees would have clapped their hands, but the earth held its breath. As silent as snow falling, he came in, and when no one was looking in the darkness, he came. There was a young girl who was engaged to a man named Joseph. Joseph was the great, 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 great grandson of King David. One morning, the girl was minding her own business when suddenly a great warrior of light appeared right there in her bedroom. He was Gabriel, and he was an angel, a special messenger from heaven. When she saw the tall, shining man standing there, Mary was frightened. You don't need to be scared, Gabriel said. God is very happy with you. Mary looked around to see if perhaps he was talking to someone else. Mary, Gabriel said, and laughed with such gladness that Mary's eyes filled with sudden tears. Mary, you're going to have a baby, a little boy. You will call him Jesus. He is God's own son. He's the one. He's the rescuer. The God who flung planets into space and kept them whirling around and around. The God who made the universe with just a word. The one who could do anything at all was making himself small and coming down as a baby. Wait, God was sending a baby to rescue the world? But it's too wonderful, Mary said and felt her heart beating hard. How can it be true? Is anything too wonderful for God? Gabriel asked. So Mary trusted God more than her eyes could see, and she believed. I am God's servant, she said. Whatever God says, I will do. Sure enough, it was just as the angel had said. Nine months later, Mary was almost ready to have her baby. Now Mary and Joseph had to take a trip to Bethlehem to the town King David was from. But when they reached the little town, they found every room was full, every bed was taken. Go away, the innkeepers told them. There isn't a place for you. Where would they stay? Soon, Mary's baby would come. They couldn't find anywhere except an old, tumbled down stable. So they stayed where the cows and the donkeys and the horses stayed. And there, in the stable, amongst the chickens and the donkeys and the cows, in the quiet of the night, God gave the world his wonderful gift. The baby that would change the world was born, his baby son. Mary and Joseph wrapped him up to keep him warm. They made a soft bed of straw and used the animal's feeding trough as his cradle. And they gazed in wonder at God's great gift. Wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, Mary and Joseph named him Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us. Because, of course, he had. Heaven coming to earth. God coming to live amongst his people. That's what Christmas is all about. That's what Christmas represents. God's great gift. And here's what I want each and every one of us to know as we celebrate today with our friends and our families. It's this, that we are all recipients of God's great gift. Each and every one of us. 
The Christmas story is the story of God giving the greatest gift that's ever been given. And he's given it to you and to me. You see, Christmas and the Christmas story is for you. And it's for me. We were lost. We were broken. We were hopeless. But God stepped in. God is holy and sinless and we're unholy and sinful. And yet, while we were still sinners, while we were far from God, while we deserve death, God does the unthinkable. Instead of giving us what we deserve, God gave us something else, a wonderful gift. He gave Jesus for you and for me. This is what makes Christmas so special. You see, there is no cross without Christmas. We don't get Calvary without Bethlehem. We're not made right with God. The gap is not bridged. There is no hope. But because of God's great gift, because of Christmas, we've been made right with God. Because of Christmas, we can receive eternal life one day and abundant life today. Christmas is God's great gift to the world. And we are the recipients of that gift. And it's my hope that as you continue to celebrate with friends and family today and for the remainder of this Christmas season, that you will reflect on the fact that God loves you. Yes, you. And he loves you so much that he gave his one and only son. He gave Jesus the greatest gift that's ever been given so that he could have a relationship with you. God loves you and God sees you and God wants to be in a relationship with you and he wants to be in a relationship with me. And here's the good news of the gospel. Because of Christmas, because of Jesus, we get to have that relationship. And I pray that the knowledge that God loves you and that he sent Jesus as a gift for you so that you can know him, so that you could be in a relationship with him, that that will give you a sense of awe and wonder and that it will fill you with comfort and joy this Christmas. Will you pray with me? Father God, you are so good. Lord, and today as we celebrate the fact that heaven came to earth, as, as we celebrate your son coming and living the life we couldn't and dying the death that we deserve on the cross, but raising to life on the third day, defeating sin, death, and the grave so that we can be made right with you. God, I, I pray that it wouldn't just be about giving gifts. God, I pray that it wouldn't just be about spending time with family. All of those things are great. And I pray that we would enjoy all those things, but I pray that we would keep Jesus at the center of it all, that we would be reminded today of the greatest gift that's ever been given, of your great gift that we celebrate each and every Christmas, and that is the gift of Jesus Christ. That is the gift of salvation, the free gift from you. And so, Lord, I, I pray that we would enjoy our time together with friends and family. God, I pray that everybody who's watching this, who's hearing this, who's maybe watching later, God, that you would bless them, God, that you would protect them, that you would go before them and behind them, Lord, and that you would give them favor with you and everyone they see and talk to. God, may this be the best Christmas of their entire life, God, and may you be at the center of it all. We pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining us online. Don't forget that we're also going to be online next Sunday on New Year's Day, 10 a.m. Pastor Kirsten and I are going to be recapping kind of what's happened in 2022, talking about some of our favorite sermons and some of our favorite things that God has done in and through Keys Church in the past year. So make sure that you tune in next Sunday. That's going to be January 1st, 10 a.m. on YouTube. It'll be on demand later, but we love you. We're praying for you. We truly do hope that this is the best Christmas ever. We love you. God bless and Merry Christmas.
Thank you.